Section 5 of Topic 3 of Paper 7 looks at the Hong Kong equity markets. And now we're focusing in on Hong Kong. Uh, how did the Hong Kong equity market uh, develop? Uh, well, it started in 1891 and moved through the points at the top of page 7 till we got to the single stock exchange of Hong Kong. And that became fully operational in 1986. Now, the structure of the stock market, uh, well, the first point is an interesting one. This is a, a relatively recent development, April 2018. Stock Exchange of Hong Kong permits pre-profit, pre-revenue companies, that is companies with no revenue, uh, to list on the main board subject to certain criteria in the MBLR, the main board listing rules. Uh, and the major, major criteria is you're a biotech company. So biotech companies can list in Hong Kong uh, that have no revenue and, and they've proved to be popular. Uh, types of securities on Hong Kong's exchange, we have equity securities, debt securities, derivatives, trusts and funds. Uh, naked short selling, I'm just picking out some of the points that can get examined. Naked short selling is where you're short selling and you don't have the stock. You're selling and you don't own the stock or you don't have access to the stock. And that has been made illegal in Hong Kong uh, due to the events of 1998. And that's prohibited in the Securities and Futures Ordinance. So can you sell without legally owning the share, yes, you can, but it's got to be a covered short sale. Uh, and the most popular route is to borrow the stock. Hang Seng Index is the index for Hong Kong. Uh, the growth enterprise market, we touched on it earlier. Uh, this offers small and mid-sized companies avenue to raise capital. Uh, you're not required to have a record of profitability, but you must have positive cash flow of at least 30 million Hong Kong dollars in aggregate for the two preceding financial years. So they're looking for some substance there. Uh, and GEM caters for professional, sophisticated investors, not for retail investors. Uh, and it operates on the base of buyer beware. Securities margin financing is the practice of lending money to investors to enable them to buy and hold listed securities. And in doing so, they will provide the securities as collateral to the financier. Now, mutual market, this covers the stock connects. We have two stock connects currently, uh, one with Shanghai and one with Shenzhen. And we give the dates there at the bottom of page seven. Top page eight. The home market rules apply to all trades. So if you're trading through the Stock Connect to Shanghai or Shenzhen, it's the Shanghai Shenzhen rules that apply to those trades. Equally, when Shanghai and Shenzhen investors are trading in Hong Kong, they must comply with the Hong Kong rules and regulations. Uh, now, who can who is eligible? Uh, to uh, trade through these links. Well, mainland China persons who are able to participate in the southbound link uh, include institutional investors uh, and individuals with half a million in cash and securities. And we've listed there the, um, the different uh, shares that are eligible in the links. Third bullet point on this page, all Hong Kong persons and overseas investors able to trade in the stock exchange can participate in the northbound. So all Hong Kong persons that are able to trade in the stock exchange in Hong Kong can participate in northbound, but there is a restriction on mainland persons uh, trading in Hong Kong. Now, the daily quota system is important, uh, and you will see there that the current northbound trading link quota is a daily quota of 52 billion RMB. So you cannot have net purchases greater than 52 billion. If you hit 52 billion, then it has to stop for that day. And the southbound trading link quota is listed there as 42 billion RMB. And as I've alluded, uh, the daily quotas calculate on a net buy basis. So sell trades in a day will increase the available quota 
uh, while the buys uh, will reduce the, the daily quota available. Uh, now, the two clearing houses, the Securities Clearing Corporation in Hong Kong and China Clear in China, have agreed two key principles to mitigate any new risks from the clearing links arrangement, application of home risk management regime as much as possible, similar to home market rules, and insulation against risk spillover across markets. Section 5.3 looks at different types of equity securities. Um, and we're told right at the top, the most common form of equity is ordinary shares. Some forms being referred to as hybrids, uh, and these hybrids, uh, preference shares, convertible notes, equity linked instruments. Now we list all the different types with details. Uh, we start with ordinary shares. and ordinary shares, you have voting rights entitled to dividends if the company is paying dividends. Uh, and if a company is being liquidated, you are last uh, for any repayment. Now, next paragraph uh, under ordinary shares, very important to Hon Hong Kong, to attract good quality and high growth companies to list in Hong Kong, innovative companies with a weighted voting rights structure are permitted to list. And this was allowed from April 2018 onwards. And this is where the weighted voting right shareholders have more of voting rights than the ordinary shareholders. But we're told that uh, those shares are not permitted to confirm more than 10 times the voting power of ordinary shares. Uh, and th the idea behind this was to stop technology companies from China going to the New York market. And Alibaba was the most notable uh, of those companies and it has now performed a secondary listing in Hong Kong. We have preference shares uh, with fixed dividends, uh, no voting rights, uh, and different types of preference shares, participating, cumulative, and convertible. A participating preference share is where you get your fixed percentage dividend, but then you can participate further in the profits of the year, so you get extra dividend. Cumulative preference shares is where um, you may not receive a dividend uh, in a year because maybe there's cash flow issues. Cumulative preference dividends, will, the, the dividend will accumulate and you will get it a, a later year when profits are available. And convertible preference shares can convert into ordinary shares. Equity warrants, uh, similar to options in that once you've invested in an equity warrant, uh, you can exercise it and pay the exercise price and buy underlying shares. But equity warrants themselves are considered equity securities. Convertible notes will convert into, um, into the underlying uh, shares. Company options, uh, stock option schemes, where management uh, have the the right to buy shares at a particular price, and it's considered an incentive to senior executives to maximize the company share price. Exchange traded funds, uh, the, these give it the uh, investors exposure to a whole equity market, and the, the, the main one in Hong Kong is the tracker fund, and we'll find out how that came about uh, very shortly. Real estate investment trusts uh, will invest in uh, real estate projects, shopping malls, car parks, etc. Structured products, these are exotic products often dreamt up by banks and we'd list some examples. And stapled securities, uh, this is where you have two or more different securities, same issuer, uh, listed as if they're illegally bound together, cannot be transferred or traded separately. Uh, and there will be a, a separate a price quotation for the stapled security uh, and no quotation is given for the individual components. An example of this would be a company share combined with a unit in a trust. So who participates in the equity market? Uh, well, listed in section 5.4, we have issuers. These are organizations that will issue securities, commercial organization, that's really the IPOs, fund houses that issue ETFs, exchange trading funds, REITs, the real estate investment trusts, uh, 
um, issued by business trust and investment banks uh, can issue derivatives, often uh, uh, also warrants and exotic structured products. What I was going to say is you have derivative warrants as opposed to the equity warrants. Two main categories of investor, you have the institutional investor, which are the institutions, and you have the retail private investors. And we're told that uh, foreign investors are attracted to Hong Kong because we have no capital gains tax levied on share trading, but there is stamp duty that's payable to the government. Further participants, dealers and traders. Dealers execute orders on behalf of clients, whereas traders are trading for themselves on behalf of the principal to make profit. Uh, we have some licensed dealers that are also authorized as market makers providing liquidity in the market. Now, custodians and share registrars, don't know why they're both uh, brought together, uh, but often examined. So please be aware of what they do. The custodian holds safeguards assets of an individual financial institution, corporation, often banks. So they will just hold the, uh, hold the investments for a particular fund, for example. Whereas share registrar is appointed by a listed company and the share registrar will maintain a register of shareholders. The share registrar sits between the listed company and the shareholders. And the services provided by a share registrar, distribution of dividends, bonus shares, the mailing of financial reports, share transfers, issuing share certificates if they're required, and distrib distributing share certificates. Please be aware of that list. Very easy to examine. Uh, the regulators, yes, they are participants. The Secures and Futures Commission supervises the Hong Kong Secures and Futures Markets. Well, you should know that. That's the reason you're doing the exam. Hong Kong exchanges that supervise operation listed companies on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, ensuring efficient, fair operation of the stock exchange. Uh, government of Hong Kong? Well, I mentioned this earlier. It was in 1998 that the Hong Kong market came under attack by speculators. They're trying to break the dollar peg and they were doing it through short selling uh, of the, the Hang Seng Index stocks. It was naked short selling and that's why it's now illegal. Well, it was all stopped by the government intervening in the market. So the government went in and bought up 25% of the free float on a Friday uh, morning. The Hang Seng Index uh, bounced back from 6,000 to 8,000 in just three hours. Uh, what were they going to do with all the stock that they'd bought with government funds? That's how we came what, came up with the Tracker Fund, an exchange trading fund. So in June 1999, government launched Tracker Fund as a vehicle to sell off the surplus equity holdings that had accumulated from intervening in the market in 1998 when the market was under attack. 5.5 .5, trading and settlement systems. So we have uh, trading conducted morning and uh, afternoon and you can see the times so there. The closing auction session uh, is 10 minutes and that allows large index funds uh, to uh, recalibrate their portfolios given the activity uh, on that day. Uh, all trading now is conducted via computer terminals uh, at the participants' offices. There are no terminals in the exchange anymore. Now, the trading system used by the Stock Exchange of Hong Kong, Orion Trading Platform, uh, and that replaced third generation of the automatic order matching execution system. We referred to that as AMS3. Uh, that was introduced in 2000, and the Orion Trading Platform came in in 2018. And it offers scalable, flexible, high-performing cash equity trading platform based on open systems technology. So it's uh, from an IT point of view, it is an advance. Volatility control mechanism came in in 2016 for safeguarding market integrity from extreme price volatility arising from trading incidents. What they're really talking about here is the flash crashes, algorithmic trading uh, by computers. Now, if a stock price deviates by more than 10% from the last traded price within five minutes, 
there is a five minute cooling off period uh, that is triggered and trades can only be priced within the reference range. The reference range is 10% either side. And finally, settlement. Physical share certificates, uh, they are used in some circumstances, but the vast majority uh, of shares are, are dealt with by electronic registration of security transactions. Clearing and settlement uh, is provided by CCAS, Clearing and Settlement System, operated by the Securities Clearing House. Uh, and uh, it is a book uh, entry system, as I said, operated by the Clearhouse. And finally, securities traded on the stock exchange are settled on a T plus two basis. That can be examined. So you have the trade day T, and then two days later, you will have settlement. That's the end of topic three of paper seven on the equity market. Uh, there will be questions in paper seven on this material. And as ever, the best way to practice uh, or to get prepare for the exam is to practice questions. And those questions can be found uh, on examinator.online under paper seven.